I think this review is going to be quite interesting because this is the first time I've played with a Windows Server device, let alone a Windows Server NAS. Stick around for more information on the Thekus W2000+. Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. So as I said, this is probably going to be quite an interesting review because I've never actually checked out a Windows Server based device, let alone a Windows Server NAS. The specs for this one is an Intel Atom with uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM and uh, two drive bays as well. We'll go through some more specs later on, but that's the basics of it. Now, uh, just to check out what's in the box real quick, you do get obviously the NAS and the power brick as well as the power cable, but you also get a user manual, which is fairly limited as it just shows the initial setup of the device. Um, so you might actually end up needing this video to help you out a little bit, but um, yeah, you also get an Ethernet cable and cable ties, which is quite cool. Now, uh, on the front of the device, you get an SD card uh, reader as well as a USB 3 port, power button, and I believe an IR uh, you know, reader as well, which is quite cool. Inside the hidden bay, the, the sort of clicky hidden bay door at the front, you get the two drives, which also have locks on them. So um, you get two keys inside the user manual bag. Um, and uh, yeah, they're you know pretty decent. The locks on them seem pretty good, and you probably couldn't rip it out. Although saying that, um, the uh, the device is quite light, so you probably could nick it quite easily unless it's got a Kensington uh, lock on it. But um, anyway, up the top you got a Thekus uh, you know logo as well as a hard drive one and two error LED as well as you know LAN, WAN, and SD card and USB uh, activity LEDs. On the back you have the DC power in two USB three uh, sorry two USB two ports, a SATA VGA. Uh, HDMI and two, uh, you know, Ethernet ports. Just taking a quick look inside, we actually found an ADATA 64GB SSD. This is quite uncommon, and even more uncommon is the PCI half height PCI slot at the back with a PCI Gen X1 um, lane inside. So if you could, uh, you know, attempt to fit something in, it looks like you could possibly even plug something in here. Um, it's basically just a full x86 PC but in a very sort of compact form factor and you normally don't see an actual SSD you normally see you know flash storage on the device so that's quite interesting for me now um, we're going to be using two 4 terabyte red pro drives just to test this out and make sure that it actually you know works and does a good job and check out some of the features as well now because this is a windows server based device there really is it's actually really quite complicated to set everything up and if you're not proficient in either windows server already or willing to spend quite a lot of time learning um, i definitely would recommend heading for one of the more easy nas options such as a, a qnap or an asus tor um, or something like that just because this is a very intensive uh, you know build and, and project. Um, now I'm going to cover, uh, because the user manual covers how to actually like initially set up the device quite easily, what I'm going to do is just cover how to set up a dry a storage pool, which is what Microsoft kind of calls a RAID array. Um, and that will basically be these two drives in a mirrored fashion, so RAID 1, um, and uh, yeah, let's go through that. So you're going to need to have open the dashboard as well as the server manager. First off, go to the server manager, click on the files and storage services, and then go to volumes and disks initially, and check what status your disks are. Make sure that they're both detected, and basically then go... Uh, Possibly, you probably need to reset the disks, which basically means formatting them uh, and leaving them as an unknown partition type. Once you've done that, you can then go into the storage pools option and uh, right click in the top box, which for some reason there's no option to do this, so there's no file menu, but just right click in the uh, top box and you know uh, hit new storage, uh, new, new storage pool. Once you've done that and selected the drives you want to do it with, you can then run through all the menus, make sure that you, you know, create a virtual disk, create a virtual, um, you know, drive, and then create a folder as well, um, just so that you can actually uh, use the uh, drive and, you know, network attach it and stuff like that as well. Now to take a look at a bit, uh, a bit on the sort of performance side, this uh, we're actually seeing about 189 megabits per second, uh, and you know on reads, and I think it was fairly similar for writes. So that's actually really interesting, especially considering it was a you know a mirrored um, fashion. Obviously, this is Crystal Disk Mark, so it's a fairly synthetic benchmark. And um, because I don't have both LAN connections connected at this very second in time, um, the maximum throughput uh, I only saw was about 80 megabits per second. I expect to see that to jump up to around about 100 if I had both connected. But that is a main saturation with the drives themselves, as opposed to you know uh, the kind of the speed of uh, of Ethernet, especially on uh, port teaming um, mode. So um, yeah, to go through some of the other features, you also get things like Azure, um, you know, backup, server backup, um, automatic backups, and things like that, and very kind of server-oriented features. As I said, it is a very kind of um, 
high-end or very kind of technological, uh, technically advanced NAS. You need to have a lot of knowledge to use this NAS, basically. So um, yeah, if you're looking for something easy, this definitely isn't for you. But um, yeah, stick around for my thoughts. So I'm not going to claim I know everything about this NAS. There's definitely a very steep learning curve involved with this NAS and it's really not for general consumers. If you are a general consumer who wants a NAS, check out some of the QNAP or Asus Tor ones we've checked out before. Or, you know, things like Synology, um, Buffalo, you know, th those sort of companies. Um, as there's a lot, you know, they're a lot easier to set up and there's sort of like wizards just to go through it. Whereas this one, you really do need some, uh, you know, prior knowledge of Windows Server uh, 2012 R2. Um, a general Windows Server stuff um, or just the ability to sit down for a good few hours and just learn um, that you know what to do with the device um, but it's not a bad device uh, by any stretch of the imagination it does seem to be a little bit more advanced and with a few more features obviously the storage pools um, was quite an interesting thing to get my head around because it's uh, that's basically the RAID um, system but obviously it's software uh, and is obviously labelled storage pools because it's a Windows device but um, yeah it's definitely a, a very uh, functional device once you get to use it and once you get to know it and um, I think that for a power user this could be better than one of the QNAP uh, type ones um, but obviously uh, as I said I'm not an entirely uh, expert on this one yet so I probably can't quite give you a full 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 opinion on it. Check out the website for uh, a written review um, which I'll hopefully update in a month or two when I get, got to grips with the NAS a little bit more. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go for pros and cons real quick. So obviously it's quite a steep learning curve and it's quite difficult to use. Um, so it's really not for general consumers. But um, if you're looking for a powerful and you know quite effective NAS, um, likely uh, you know is gonna be good, quite good for a lot of applications. Um, and if you're looking for a more sort of high-end, uh, technically minded NAS, then this is definitely for you. In terms of scores, they're gonna give it a fourth value for money because it is quite good value for money once you get to use it. Um, in terms of performance, I'm going to give it a 4 just because it's not, um, you know, I didn't really get to uh, test how to use it properly um, and the performance that I did see was, you know, it was pretty good but it obviously isn't the best in the world. Um, in terms of functionality, I'm going to give it a 3 just because uh, it's such a high barrier to entry to get in that I really uh, can't verify um, how much of a feature rich platform it is uh, without you know spending another month trying to do this review uh, which really isn't going to be possible and uh, yeah in terms of style I'm going to give it a 4 um, because it is quite stylish it's nothing all that special it's not s certainly not a showpiece but then again it is a NAS so you wouldn't really expect it to be and in terms of check team GB score it's going to get a 4 just because while it is quite difficult to use um, you know to get to get to use I can imagine it being a very powerful solution for someone who does have the knowledge for it so that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions about the NAS, um, you know, want any support links, they're in the description down below. But if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them for you. Feel free to leave a like if you like it, and obviously dislike if you dislike it. But let us know what you thought of the video in the comments down below. Um, check out some of our other videos that hopefully should be over there. Check out some of, uh, you know, our, our Facebook and Twitter if you want to check out, you know, be uh, behind the scenes and that kind of... Uh, stuff. Um, help us out by buying us on, uh, buying stuff on Amazon. Check out some of our t-shirts for uh, non-road merchandise. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.